and welcome to this next video in the playlist on topology. In this video what we're going to talk about is the concept of a topological homeomorphism. Okay, so the structure for this video is I'm firstly going to discuss the motivation for a topological homeomorphism and I'll give a um, motivating example, a very simple motivating example. Then what we'll look at is the abstract definition of a topological homeomorphism and then what we'll look at is some intuitive examples to get an intuitive feel for what this concept is and there is a really nice intuition for what this concept is in terms of stretching uh, spaces. Okay, so um, firstly then, let's motivate what a topological homeomorphism is going to be. Okay, so this is the concept of a topological isomorphism. So topological homeomorphisms are just structure preserving maps in topology. Okay, so if you've had exposure to any form of pure maths before, uh, be it group theory, ring theory, field theory, any of the abstract algebras, um, or the theory of metric spaces, or some other branch of pure mathematics, one of the concepts that you will probably been exposed to before is the concept of a structure-preserving map a map that is between two of these structures uh, in whichever field that you've studied that preserves the mathematical structure. Okay, so a map that really is telling you that the two structures are actually identical, even though they may not look identical. Okay, so you may have used different symbols to denote the two different structures, but they are actually identical. A topological homeomorphism is this concept of a structure-preserving map, which is usually called an isomorphism in maths, uh, for topology. So you can, if you like, call topological homeomorphisms topological isomorphisms. People would know what you meant, uh, but uh, for historical reasons they are usually referred to as topological homeomorphisms. Not to be confused with homomorphisms, you do need that E there. Okay, so... Um, to give a motivating example then of this for those who haven't actually been exposed to uh, this concept in other areas of pure maths, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two topological spaces, two really simple topological spaces that I can actually draw down on the piece of paper, and I want to show you this concept that we have two topological spaces that although they don't look the same, they are the same, okay, and I hope this will be very obvious. So I'm going to create two topological spaces then, so topological space number one is going to be over here, so I'll start off by creating the set of symbols, and I really want to keep this as simple as possible, so I'm just going to create a set that has two symbols in it, and I'm going to use some um, alphabet symbols, so I'll have A and B. Okay, so these are the two elements of my first set that is going to form a topological space. Okay, so it's only got two elements in it, and one is called A and one is called B, and that's it. Okay, now, I want to put a topology on this set to turn it into a topological space, and I'm going to choose the discrete topology, where we have every single subset of this set uh, in the topology. So writing this out explicitly then, Let's have tau here, and let's say it's going to be the set that contains the empty set. Okay, so that's a subset that we always need to have in a topology. Okay, it'll also have the entire set, which I'll put here, so the set containing A and B. And then it will also have the two other sets, uh, which are the singletons. So we'll have the set just containing A and the set just containing B. And hopefully you'll agree that this set of subsets of this set, which I'll call capital X up here, um, this contains absolutely every single subset of that set capital X. There are no other ones that you can possibly come up with. So this is indeed the power set of that set capital X. Okay, so there's topological space number X, uh, or rather X. So it's got the set here with this topology on it. Now what I'm going to do is create another topological space that is going to be topologically homeomorphic to this one. So my claim is that these two are going to be 
identical to each other, even though they don't look identical. And the only difference between the two is going to be that I'm going to use different symbols in the set, okay? So all that's going to be different is the symbols I use in the set. The actual mathematical structure, the topological structure, is going to be identical. Okay, and that's this concept of topological homeomorphism, that although you've used different symbols, the actual mathematical structure, the topological structure, is identical. Okay, so there's not really an important difference between the two, because the symbols are, after all, just man-made. They're something that someone's come up with. They don't matter. What matters is the actual structure. Okay, so let me create this second topological space here. So once again, this box will be the set, and this time I think I will call my set X bar here. So I'll just colour in uh, this box in red. So orange can denote everything to do with the first topological space. Red here will denote everything to do with the second topological space. Okay, now I'm going to den uh, denote the topology that I'm going to put on this second topological space by tau bar. Okay, and oh, whoops, I haven't actually put the elements of the set in yet, so uh, getting a bit ahead of myself. So let's firstly put the elements of the set in, and once again, it's going to be a set that just contains two things, but this time I'm going to use some numbers instead. So if I'm going to use these city symbols instead of those city symbols. Okay, so I'm now using the symbols one and two, and they're just symbols. They're just something that long, long ago some human came up with. They're not anything God-given. They are just symbols that some human has come up with. Okay, right. So what then is the topology that I'm going to put on this set of symbols? Well, the topology that I'm going to put on this set of symbols is again going to be the power set of this uh, set X bar here. So I'm going to have the empty set as one of my subsets that will be in the topology tau bar. I'm also going to have the entire set, which will be the set containing 1 and 2, as one of the subsets that will be in my topology tau bar. And I'm also going to have the two singleton sets. So the set containing just 1, and the set containing just 2 here. Okay, so that's the topology tau bar that I'm going to put on this second set to make a second topological space. Okay, so hopefully you can see that although I have used different symbols in these two sets, these two topological spaces are not actually that different at all, okay? Indeed, apart from the fact that the symbols are different, the actual topologies are identical to one another, okay? And if I came up with any theorem about this topological space here, if I was able to prove some fancy theorem about this topological space here, I would be able to take that theorem and apply it over here as well, okay, because the topological structure is identical, uh, as long as the theorem was actually about the topological structure. Of course, if the theorem was about the symbols, then of course the symbols would matter and I wouldn't be able to translate it, but the symbols aren't important, the symbols aren't part of topology. The topolo topology is the study of the topology here, the topological structure, not the symbols that we use to denote the elements of the set which we're going to build into a topological space. Okay, so these two topological spaces here are the same, so we would call these two uh, homeomorphic, which means that they're the same up to the fact that you have used different symbols to denote the elements of the topological space. We would call X and X bar homeomorphic topological spaces, or you could use the word isomorphic, which is the word that's more generally used for this concept in mathematics, where you've got one structure that is the same as another structure. And this is exactly the same uh, sort of thing that we do in group theory where we talk about isomorphic groups or ring theory where we talk about isomorphic rings. It means that the two structures are identical up to the fact that you've used different symbols to denote the elements of the structure. Okay, so these are homeomorphic topological spaces. Now, let's try and rigoratize this th then. What is the condition? How can we tell if a if two topological spaces are homeomorphic, okay, because here it was very simple because we had such simple topological spaces, but we need a way more generally of actually figuring out if two topological spaces are homeomorphic, and we do this by creating a topological homeomorphism, okay, and a topological homeomorphism is going to be a map from one topological space to the other that is going to relabel up the elements of the first topological 
topological space with elements of the second topological space. Now, if the topological spaces are truly homeomorphic, if they're truly the same up to the fact that you've used different symbols, then if I relabel up the elements of this topological space with elements in this topological space, then I should be able to turn this topology, the topological structure here, into the topological structure over here. So that's the next concept. So I will demonstrate this then for my simple example here, and then I'll generalize this for the more general case. Okay, so what I could do then is I could create a map, which is going to be my topological homeomorphism, which sends A, my symbol in the first topological space here, onto 1, this symbol in my second topological space, and it will send B, this again a symbol in my first topological space, onto the symbol 2, a symbol in my second topological space. Now this isn't the only homeomorphism that I could create. I could do it the other way around. I could send A onto 2 and B onto 1. However, the condition is that this map does need to be bijective. So I couldn't send both of these onto 1 because then of course it wouldn't be injective. Neither would it be subjective. Okay, so it does have to be a bijection. So here then is this mapping which we'll call F. Again, this is going to be the topological homeomorphism, and the first criterion that I'm going to have is that F must be a bijective map. So a homeomorphism is a bijective map between two topological spaces. So here is F here, and it's a bijective map, and that effectively means that this has to just be a relabeling map. It is literally just relabeling all of the elements in the first topological space with the elements in the second topological space. Okay, and it's going to be one to one. Okay, so every element in the co-domain topological space here is going to have just one element in the domain topological space being relabeled up as it, which is exactly what we want. We don't want two elements here being relabeled up as the same thing over here. That's not good at all. And also it's going to be onto, meaning that uh, every element in the co-domain topological space is going to get an element in the domain topological space being mapped onto it, or being relabeled as it. So uh, that's exactly what we want as well. So bijective, just think of that as we are changing the symbols here. We're changing A uh, from being represented by A to 1. Okay, and of course I can do that. The symbols are just man-made. So I'm just going to scratch out this symbol and replace it with a 1. I'm going to scratch out this symbol and replace it with a 2. And now what's the big thing that I want now to be true? I don't just want a relabeling map like this. I want it to be the case that with this relabeling map, if I apply the relabeling map to my topology here, I want it to turn it into this topology over here. Okay, now what do I mean by that? I mean, I want you to go through all of the subsets here in my topology in the domain topological space, and I want you to relabel up all the elements in these subsets according to this bijective map F, the topological homeomorphism. Okay, so just to show you this, the empty set, what will we relabel up the empty set as? Well, the empty set contains nothing, so when we relabel up no elements according to this F map, we'll still end up with an empty set, so it'll still be the empty set. The set AB, that does contain some elements, and what we'll now do is we'll map A onto what it is mapped onto by this mapping F, so we'll relabel up A as 1, we'll relabel up B then according to the topological homeomorphism as well, uh, and we'll relabel that up as 2, and hopefully you get the idea now, but I'll just complete this. So then what we'll do for this subset, we'll relabel up the elements here according to this relabeling map F, and we'll relabel up A as 1 here, and then we'll relabel up B according to the relabeling map, and we'll relabel the that as 2. Okay, and you can see that once I have relabeled up the elements of the subsets that are in the topology on this domain topological space, I have now turned it into the subsets that are in the topology in the codomain topological space. So truly, when I relabel up the symbols in this X topological space here, or with the symbols in this X bar topological space over here, I can turn this one into this one. Okay, they are truly not different from one another at all, apart from the fact that you have used different symbols. Okay, and the way that we can capture that is that if they are truly the same up to the fact that you've used different symbols, and I'll start using this word, if they are homeomorphic, then there must exist this mapping F which is a bijective mapping from one to the other 
which you can think of as relabeling up the elements in the domain one with the elements in the codomain one. And it must be the case that when you relabel up uh, the uh, subsets that are in your topology of the domain topological space, that the topology becomes the topology on your codomain topological space. Okay, so there's a correspondence between the subsets that are in the topology of the domain topological space and the uh, subsets that are in the topology on the codomain topological space. Okay, so let's try and capture that for a more general topological space now. Okay, so remember the intuition in terms of this very simple example, but now we're going to go more general. Okay, so I've got two topological spaces. Here is my topological space x tau, okay, and here is my second topological space x bar tau bar, okay. And I'm going to say that these two topological spaces are going to be homeomorphic if it is possible to find a homeomorphism between them, a relabeling map that will turn this one into this one. Okay, so what I need to find then is a mapping F which will map all the elements of this set of the domain topological space onto the elements of the set in the codomain topological space X bar, and this mapping F needs to be bijective. Okay, so that's our first criteria, and it must be this relabeling map, okay? If it's in, not injective and not subjective, then of course you can intuitively hopefully see that that's not going to be a relabeling map, and that's not going to do what we want it to do. Okay, so it must be bijective. Okay, so this is going to be our topological homeomorphism, but it needs to obey more than just being bijective. It needs to turn this topology into this topology here. There needs to be a bijective correspondence between the subsets in the topology tau of my domain topological space and the topology tau bar of my codomain topological space. Okay, so there needs to be another map, which I'll call F prime, which is very much so related to F, okay, uh, which is going to map my topology tau onto tau bar. So it's going to map the subsets in the topology tau onto the subsets in the topology tau bar. So here, this would be my F prime here, this map mapping these subsets in the topology tau onto these subsets in the topology tau bar, okay, which specifically will send any subset U onto what is F of U, okay, so any subset U which is in my topology in my topology tau, so u is going to be an element of tau, it's going to quite simply send it onto what f of u is, which just means relabel up all of the elements in this subset u according to this mapping f. Okay, so that's how f prime is going to be defined. It's going to be completely and utterly related to my relabeling map f. Okay, hence why I've just called it f prime. And we want this to be bijective as well. Okay, so if you define F prime, like so, where it will map all the elements of the topology tau onto the um, elements in tau bar, hopefully, uh, by it'll take a subset in tau and map it onto F of that subset, so it will relabel up all the elements in that subset according to F, and you'll get a new subset that will be in our codomain set X bar, and I want this to be a bijective map, so I want all of these open sets in the uh, topological space on my domain topological space to be taken onto open sets in my uh, Co sorry, I want all of the open sets in my domain topological space to be taken onto open sets in my codomain topological space. And moreover, I want it to be the case that this is a bijective map, okay? Uh, so um, every uh, open set here must have one and only one uh, set uh, over here being mapped onto it. So there must be a bijective correspondence between them. It must be one-to-one -one and onto. They must be identical, basically. And this is actually equivalent to saying that this mapping F has to be continuous in both directions. And there's a special word for that. We call it a bi-continuous map. Okay, so why is that equivalent to saying that this mapping has to be uh, continuous in both directions? Well, if we want there to be this bijective correspondence between the topological spaces, uh, then we want it to be the case that all topological, uh, all open sets in the topological space in the topology on the codomain topological space have to have a corresponding uh, 
it's open set in the topology on the domain topological space. Okay, and that's the condition for the forward map to be continuous. And we also want it to be the case that all the open sets in the topology on the domain topological space have corresponding open sets in the codomain topological space. And that's the condition that the inverse map is continuous. Okay, so another way of saying this is that we want this mapping F to be continuous forward and backwards. So we want it to be continuous and we want its inverse to be continuous as well. And that's another way of saying that we want the open sets in the two topologies on the domain and codomain topological space to be in bijective correspondence with one another. Okay, so that then is the formal definition of a topological homeomorphism. I think we'll have a break here, and then in the next video what I want to do is look at the more intuitive um, notion of what it means for two topological spaces to be homeomorphic by looking at some real examples.